Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the 343industries.org community forum Let's Play at XCOM 2. My name is Red Star Rocket, and when we left you last time, we were just about to engage in Operation Ancient Heart to rescue Dr. Lena Krause from an advent cell. But first, we have a small amount of customization to do with our Spartans, one or two of whom have ranked up. So we'll head briefly over to the barracks and introduce ourselves to them. We'll walk after his excellent showing last time, received a promotion, and while I had hoped that Kiko would have chosen to pursue the irregular tree owing to its arguably superior uh, upgrade for my playstyle, he has in fact chosen regular, so he will be taking opportunist, which basically increases his abilities to do damage from uh, Overwatch fire. So we'll enable that now. We also saw two of the Spartans gain upgrades. Uh, Gamble, after his showing, uh, was promoted to a sniper, so we will just equip him with the correct UNSC weapons. As opposed to the default ones. Uh, speaking of which, we should probably replace Kiko's uh, slightly out of place pistol with the correct one. And lastly, Morrigan, after her excellent showing, also ranked up and became a ranger, meaning she now gains access to all the delicious close combat weapons that XCOM has to offer. One of the great things about uh, this Let's Play is that although I'm playing with a mod which allows me to customise the classes that are chosen, ultimately you are choosing the soldiers that I have available to me. So if you want me to play uh, with specific classes, if you want your soldier to be a very specific thing, you can absolutely do that and I will uh, be reduced to working with what I have essentially. So if you have a preferred class, if you like the sight of one you've seen so far, please go ahead and request it and I'll be happy to uh, put it in the Let's Play. And with that taken care of, I'm thinking I'm just about get ready to start on this mission here. So, let's get ready to go and rescue Miss Krause. Setting course for Sector 15, West Asia. And I'm thinking for this mission we will probably roll with the same squad we used last time, as they have done a reasonably good job of uh, earning their places. Perhaps the only real concern is that we still don't have a specialist. Uh, in particular we do not have a hacking specialist, which is always something which comes in very, very useful, but I'm sure we'll cope with what we have here. So without further ado, let's launch this mission. Activity in the area. We'll need to lock down the AO, secure the VIP, and eliminate all enemy contacts standing in our way. Confirmed location for the VIP. Move to rendezvous. Eliminate all hostile contacts. Opposition is masked. So as you can see, while this is a 12 turn mission, we do have quite a lot of ground to cover here. And this is a fairly vertical map. There's quite a few places where we should be able to get on top, such as this spot here. And hopefully take some shots down at enemy soldiers, which will not only give us boost to aim, but also help us generally see a bit more of the map and Heading out. act a bit more intelligently, I suppose. Although I am concerned here by the fact that we don't seem to be getting any vision past the edge of this truck, so... I think we'll probably send Kiko just down here to see if we can spot anything. 
I certainly wouldn't have wanted to blunder straight into that. And while I would like to move a little closer here, I feel that it would be a little bit risky with so little information available. Although that said, we could get into a very, very good spot here, so I suppose it is the risk of is there something in the uh, darkness over here, which would advance us and potentially give the game away. So for now, I think we'll just put Gamble over here. And we look like we'll be alright from over there, so I'm just going to move Morrigan up a tad. To bring that wonderful shotgun of hers into range. Also thinking we will put Kiko just here, so the cover isn't necessarily great. But on the other hand, this is guaranteed to avoid uh, him being flanked if these two choose to move forward, as I can't predict whether they'll move sort of to this side or to this side, either of which could potentially leave him flanked and subject us to a, a premature attack if they uh, do reveal us. Moving out. At the same token, I'm going to bring uh, Tyrone just over here. Copy. And as you can see, the aim bonuses, even on a couple of tiles differences, are absolutely staggering here. I think the uh, Advent Trooper is perhaps only one or technically two tiles further away and yes he's got a 13% higher chance to actually hit him with an attack so that's definitely something fairly impressive and here what I'm noticing is Morrigan is suffering the same drawback in terms of lack of critical chance so unfortunately I think this is a lot of play we're going to have to make do without our critical chance bonuses, but never mind, we'll do the best we can. And I think the best we can do here is probably start with a shotgun attack. Although that said... No, I think a shotgun attack is probably the best option here. So if this could crit Morrigan, I would be very, very happy indeed. We've been spotted. Now, while I would like to move here, this does of course carry the risk of exposing something over here. But I think we'd be in a strong enough position we could just about get away with it. Position confirmed. And of course, all you need to do to kill here is get the hit, but a crit would be nice as well, just for bragging. <laughs> As you can see here, at below a certain range, sniper rifles uh, like the DMR do suffer a reduction to aim. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any way to get Kiko into a position where he could flank this sectoid, but we could get a grenade shot against him. But just for the moment, 
I think we'll go with a pistol shot from uh, Gamble. And unfortunately, he is suffering the same crit chance penalty. Oh dear. Not that it's usually relevant, though. Although I think we've, at this point, not had a single crit this mission, which is a little disappointing. Moving out. And I probably should have considered that the possibility that we reveal something, but never mind. We'll uh, head to Overwatch with that bonus to of accuracy. And I'm thinking we'll also just park Gamble up here. So he's in a good position for that sniper rifle. Although I'm looking at that and beginning to wonder if I haven't made something of a silly decision here. The best uh, solution here will be some high explosives. Here, catch. As we need to get these two into the open as much as possible. Although worryingly that only seems to have exposed one of them. Now I feel that this is a decent chance to hit, but this is of course a guaranteed hit, although it's not a guaranteed crit, and those, as a result, could essentially be a wasted shot. I think we'll make that decision in a few moments' time, no need to rush it. The best decision for right now is probably going to be to bring Morrigan up with a shotgun. And we'll see if we can take that advent officer out. Not great odds there, but acceptable odds here, so let's see if we can get a hit. That's unfortunate. That is not good. Let's see if we can take out this Advent Trooper. Do we want to take this risk, actually, because if we don't get a kill here... Could I hit both of those at once with a grenade? I don't think I can. No. So one option here would be to expend two grenades, but that would translate to three in a turn. Which is obviously not great. And it wouldn't necessarily guarantee a kill either, so... Unfortunately for the moment, I think we will have to take a pistol shot here. I hope for that. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to go with a DMR shot here in order to try and get this kill. Thank you so much, Kiko. <laughs> Some silly decisions on my part there. Some very silly decisions, in fact. We'll have to uh, improve if we're going to avoid unnecessary casualties. I'm on the move. Because that could quite easily have gone the other way. I'm sure the docks will want to see this. So in here we have our hostage. And there are quite a few ways we could do this. 
I think probably the most sensible way would simply be to blow out this wall here, and then we can collect the hostages and immediately have ready access to the roof. And we can simply head over the top there. Moving to position. But first let's move forward and make sure that we're clear. So I think for this turn we will throw this grenade, and then provided nothing is revealed, as I desperately hope will happen, then we will reload everyone. Kiga probably doesn't need a reload here, strictly speaking, but it's always worth to top off when you're not in combat. Now, I'm not entirely certain if we can access this door from directly adjacent to it or not. But I suppose we have enough time at the moment that, if not, we can recover. Heading to that location. We're not under a huge, huge amount of uh, pressure time-wise, which is always good. Good copy. Moving on target. Yeah, I'll see you. Okay. Overwatch. And for now, we'll just pop everyone in Overwatch. Which may or may not prove to be a good decision here. So at this point, perhaps the logical thing to do would be to expend a grenade, blow out this wall, wound the sectoid, and generally spoil these uh, these fellows' days. I'm trying to find a way to allow us to do that. That will also let us blow out that wall there, but. Seems like it's going to be an either or proposition, unfortunately. But I suppose, if worse comes to worse, Morrigan should be in a position where she can stall forward and get a reasonably high percentage shot on both of these. And of course, Kiko could take a low chance shot with the primary weapon, if necessary and then follow up with a pistol shot, so I think we'd be okay with that. I suppose another thing to check would be, just to make certain we've only fought one group of enemies thus far. So perhaps a slightly better option would be to bring Gamble forward. Oh, he's already used a grenade. I'm hesitant about using grenades here as they should always be used um, very, very tactically and very carefully. And right now I feel as though this is maybe being a bit too liberal with them, I suppose. As if we encounter another group, we'll be down using the grenades on our remaining soldiers, and that's not great. And this is an 88% chance to hit, but... That only has a two-thirds chance of killing, so what's two-thirds of that? Uh, 59? 
So essentially I'm staking this on a 59% chance to hit, which is not necessarily what I would want to do. Oh, there are 59% chance to kill. So the odds are in my favour, but not hugely so. And there is, of course, the very, very slim, pot admittedly, potential to expose another group of hostiles at the back here. But we do get a free shot with the primary weapon, essentially, so... We may as well try this out, I think, because it does no harm at this point. Unless we were to use a grenade launcher. I think the more I'm looking at this, the more it's going to have to be the grenade launcher. Just to avoid any unnecessary risks. And what we'll try and do is we'll try and blow this wall out. Rather than uh, wound the Advent Soldier. Get ready for a surprise! And the wall is gone, which is something. So, first things first, we'll take our free shot with the primary weapon. Probably against the Advent Trooper here, I think. And if necessary, we can follow up with a pistol shot. This is essentially a risk-free move at this point. And of course it wouldn't quite carry enough damage for a kill. But never mind. Let's bring Morrigan up to point blank. And this should give her, I think, a 100% chance to hit. We do have an emergency grenade as well, we can use that, so we'll bring Gamble forward for a pistol shot to finish off this Advent Trooper. And if that doesn't work, we can take the pistol shot or throw a grenade. At any rate, we'll make a decision as necessary. For the meantime, we'll just kill this sectoid. And now we will spend Bulwark's last action to open this door up. We may as well go for the higher percentage one at this point. There's no f negative effects to it. And there's such a similar level that it doesn't make much difference. I don't expect to get either. Yeah. Wouldn't have made any difference, but we have got the door open, which is something. Three. We've got the VIP in time, moving to evac. Menace one five status confirmed. VIP is in tow. Proceed to the extraction point. We'll have Miss Krause move to here just for the moment and then we'll uh have her put her head down. And that is not what I would have wanted. Venice one five, we're picking up an enemy transport inbound on your current position. As I'm thinking, possibly the best decision at this point would be to simply storm forward. Though that does carry a lot of inherent risks. If we move onto this roof too early, and it turns out that there are enemies waiting for us there, we could be in trouble. That said, we do not want to give them a turn to get set up, so... I think we'll take an explorationary uh, move up here with Ty.
And moving on to the upper roof again carries a risk, but I... I'm not quite sure what the alternative would be, unfortunately. Morrigan, for some reason, is, uh... It's not quite displaying her level progression properly. Never mind. We'll just move her up there. And hopefully if we move to here we'll avoid triggering anything, but we really do need at this point to find out if there's anything on that upper roof, so... Well, we could just—I suppose we could just try skirting it and avoid triggering anything that way. Moving on target location. I'm just looking at this. I don't know if Ty's necessarily going to have enough uh, room to move up here anyway. to a position where you can shoot, so... As strange as it se seems, I may actually move to here, simply so that we can attempt to take a shot next turn, as from up here I don't think he'll have anywhere within movement range where he'll be able to head to to get a shot. As I expect enemies will fall back towards this, rather than come around the corner. And we do also run the risk potentially of exposing something down here. If we move there, so... I think we'll move to here for now. As we know, this is a safe tile. We will, however, bring Gamble up here. And we will have Bulwark accompany him. Oh, Miss Krause can simply head up to here, if need be. And she has five hit points. I think the maximum amount of damage that Advent can deal in a single attack is four on reaction fire, so if any of them get on Overwatch, as callous as it sounds, an option might be to have her run the overwatch and take the hit. Okay, this is actually pretty good for us overall. If we have Ty move to here, he can get a flanking attack on this trooper. These are all rubbish shots. <laughs> a few things we could do here. I think the first I think the first thing to do will be Should we use a grenade on that? Unfortunately Morrigan is the only other one with a grenade and I had wanted to get her to have a shot, but if we could blow out both these pieces of cover and expose these troopers, that would make things much easier for us. So I think that's what we'll go for here. Good old fashioned collateral damage. Although well, I probably should have moved her back to a safer spot. And we've killed him with fall damage, which is not intended, but absolutely excellent. Although, of concern is the fact that we haven't actually exposed this chap here, which is really bad. I apologize, I have to suspend recording for a second. Apologies for that.
We'll try another frag grenade here, hopefully blow this out, and if that doesn't work, then I... I hate to say it, but I feel I may be slightly out of ideas. Although I suppose we could take a quick shot first. This is risk-free, essentially. Right. This is not a good situation. And hopefully this will drop this captain to the lower floor and kill it outright. At this point I think the best option we have is simply to move forward and pray that this uh, is a hit from Tyrone. But this is not a good situation. This is a 93% chance to hit. Thank goodness for that. I think Gamble has a guaranteed hit here, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to have Miss Krabs move up. I think just to, uh, just to here. Nice risk-free spot. As we don't want to risk revealing a pod when we literally uh, have no moves available. That's a surefire way to get your soldiers killed. So we'll move everyone just up to here and get them into dashing range of the extraction zone. And we'll have everyone just quickly move to Overwatch as an emergency measure. But for now the intention is simply going to be to get to the extraction point and leave. I don't think we've killed everything on the map, but we didn't need to, so... You know, no tears spilled there. And with everyone safely in the extraction zone, we should be just about ready to head off. I'm out of here. And isn't that something? Because there is a level above, she's not eligible for evac in that position. That's affirmative. Well, at least I certainly hope that's why, but that's unusual. I haven't encountered that before. Sorry, I apologize for the here. I've been distracted. That is a really, really impressive amount of intention to detail by the XCOM team. Packing it in. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Fortunately, we did get all the enemies. Uh, another flawless mission. Probably took a little longer than I would have liked, but overall, I think that's gone quite well. And once again, we didn't take any damage at all. Or rather, we didn't even come under fire at all, which is good. The only concern at this point is I think most of our soldiers have lost the absolutely critical bonus from the fire, so at this point I think we'll disable that second wave option as we're not going to get a great deal of abuse out of this campaign, I don't think. Big Ty, our grenadier, has said he would like to follow the heavy gunner track, which is just fine by me. Shredder uh, allows primary weapon attacks with the saw, ignore the description, it is the saw, to uh, shred enemy armor. We haven't met any armored enemies yet, but this is really, really vital when we start getting to enemies who are 
quite tough later on in the game. So having a Shred Egg around here is always really useful. Gamble is a sniper that can shoot enemies beyond his own sight range, provided there's a line of sight between them. So the options here, we have Long Watch and Return Fire. I personally don't think either of these are particularly useful. Uh, return Fire is not so great because in order for it to activate, you have to allow the enemy to be shooting at you, which is not what you want, uh, particularly for snipers who you're probably going to want to be setting up at longer ranges anyway. Long Watch is not necessarily particularly useful, as uh, well, it can be good for staging or ambushes and things for the most part. It's just a it's just a little buff rather than a, an ability which I'd actively plan around, but it's better than nothing. And it is an upgrade, so that's something. We've acquired advanced focus, which is pretty good. Uh, could maybe equip that on a low will soldier to avoid panic, mind control, things like that. A stock allows us to do a small amount of damage even on misses, so that might be something worth adding to a sniper if ever we desperately need something cleaned up and can't risk uh, missing. Another impressive effort, Commander. My expectations were high, and yet you have exceeded them. And along with uh, Miss Kraus, we have acquired 100 points of intel, which is fantastically useful. We're seeing a bit of a buff to our research times, which is good. This will be something to collect next time. For the moment, I think we're going to finish uh, the locator beacon and get, get ourselves the alien under weapons, course. particularly the freeze grenades are what I'm looking for here. Gorilla Tactics School now operational. And the Gorilla Tactics School is fantastic as once we get a sergeant it will enable us to boost the size of our squad to take five soldiers at a time which is obviously really really good as it not only gives us an extra t uh, turns worth of attacks on the battlefield but perhaps more importantly means we can get your spartans into the action a bit quicker and a bit more reliably. What we also have here you can choose to train, train spartans uh, as specific classes which is always good. So let's have a quick look at who we have in our barracks here and we'll decide uh, who's next for our rookies. Oops. Now I believe uh, a Heavy B119, I apologize if I've mispronounced that, uh, wanted to be an infantry soldier. I hate grumpy soldiers. He wanted to be an infantryman and he wanted to be an irregular, so we will most certainly uh, be getting him to that as soon as possible. As having an irregular who can reliably uh, hit crits and things will be infinitely useful essentially in our uh, future operations. We could also purchase the leader upgrade thing here, but right now we don't have the necessary supplies and it's a bit of a gamble. Some of the abilities are useful, some not so much, so we'll come back to that in the future. You and I both know we only had one other Sky Ranger, Commander. It's worse for wear, but this heap used to be Big Sky's pride and joy, and someone's been putting her to work. It may be possible to triangulate exactly where they took off from, but take some time. Commander, these weapons are unlike any design I have previously encountered before. I could attempt further analysis, but the likelihood of us reverse engineering them appears low regardless. So the weapons of the hunt. Uh, some of them are quite useful, some of them less so. I think the only one which is a straight upgrade from what we currently have available. But as it stands, we have people still waiting for an assignment. We can have them working on construction, excavation, or staffing a facility. Remember what Tigan said. These new weapons are one of a kind. If we leave them on the battlefield, they'll be lost to us forever. So as I was saying, uh, 
generally these weapons are a little bit of a trade-off. Um, I think the only ones which are necessarily a straight upgrade from what we have uh, would be the Shadow Keeper, which is certainly pretty good and I think in particular might be really really useful for an irregular infantryman. And the Hunter's Axe, which is just a straight upgrade from the machete, is it allows a free attack uh, on top of, I believe, having slightly increased stats. The Frost Bomb, a little more situational, allows you to freeze an enemy for a turn and essentially take them out of a fight. So, I'm fairly certain I can find uses for that, put it that way. For now, we'll just quickly have a look at the axe versus the sword. So the uh, Hunter's Axe does actually deal an, a single extra point of damage, which is very, very useful to us. So we will equip that. It may be a little unwieldy, but in the right hands, this thing should cut down anything standing in your way. And that may be replaced once we get the fusion blades, I'm not certain yet. I think we will also, just for the moment, give uh, the Shadow Keeper to Bulwark, as I feel he'd probably get the most benefit out of it. The way this one is sighted in, there's no excuse for missed shots. And in terms of the frost grenades, I think they would probably do the most use again on Morrigan. Although I'd be reluctant to put all the eggs in one basket with her, as it were. As they wouldn't be particularly useful on a sharpshooter, uh, as I'd pr ideally have them further back. They probably wouldn't be too useful on Kiko, as I would be wanting to try and get multiple shots off or uh, move up, get flanking attacks, that kind of thing. Although the same could be said of Morrigan. But I suppose the thing is, normally what we'd be doing is having Kiko throw a grenade if he's not going to fire, or fire and throw a grenade, which would hopefully expose someone else. So really at the moment it's a choice between uh, Morrigan and Kiko. And I think we'll probably put them... I think for the moment we'll try them on Kiko. And if that doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. And we can always swap them back out. The charges in this grenade don't seem all that powerful, but according to Shen, the liquefied gases inside should lead to an instantaneous freeze effect. In terms of personal combat sims, we will most certainly be adding speed to Morrigan, as that is oops, hugely, hugely important, getting the most mobility possible, getting her to be able to move as far as possible to get extra flank attacks with that shotgun. In terms of our willpower increase, I would think that would probably be Ty, simply because we absolutely do not want him panicking and being mind controlled as he does so much damage with those grenades and that uh, machine gun. Although later on this may be replaced if I decide to swap it out for uh, something to boost his accuracy even further. And we'll see if we can go just a little bit further before we... Uh... Avenger plotting we'll see if we can collect these supplies before we get our next mission. I'm not quite sure when the first Terra mission is, but I think it's These usually around the end of the month. Crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. Resistance Radio, codename Marconi. The Avenger serves our purposes adequately in terms of coordinating our communications network, but if we hope to increase our range and reach, every possible outlet will have to do more. A series of carefully positioned relay towers would suffice, assuming we can miniaturize the technology we've adapted from the aliens' own communications equipment. It may be difficult to balance the requisite power levels versus the increased chances of detection, but this is our best chance to expand on our capabilities. With the increased coverage, we can expect the efficiency of local resistance operations to improve, strengthening the groups working within the range of the towers. A message from Tygen. And it's tempting at this point to go for magnetic weapons, I think. Although I don't know if we necessarily have the supplies to take advantage of that. Hmm. 
Mm. Difficult decision. I think for the moment we might go for the Advent Officer autopsies. I think that opens up some new technologies. The Advent Officers appear to be similar, if not physically the same as the common Advent Trooper in terms of power and agility. However, field reports indicate a more developed mental acuity, as the Officers do provide tactical directives to the subordinate Advent Forces. From my own experience, Advent generally deploys heavy security rather than subterfuge when it comes to protecting their primary facilities, at least the ones I had access to personally. If they have gone to the trouble of hiding this black site, I suspect our findings there will lead us to even greater questions. Commander, we can now construct radio relays in any region where we've made contact with the local resistance. So as we can see, Ahibi B-19, uh, Blue, has reached the uh, infantry class and can now fire his primary weapon twice in a turn. And he's chosen to roll with an assault rifle. Nothing on the local comms. Advent's been quiet lately. I'm guessing we have you to thank for that. Our pleasure, Den Mother. Enjoy it while it lasts. We plan to. Our water purification... Massive signal coming from the Advent Network Tower. It's... global. Sir, I think you want to see this. Fellow citizens, for 20 years, the Advent Coalition has worked tirelessly to repair the ravages and injustices of the old world. Under our stewardship, our cities prosper, our people flourish, and our world heals. And yet, among us, there are still those who would refuse to acknowledge the truth, who are determined to see all that we have achieved. Multiple Crum radar contacts on approach to Haven Alpha 7. That must end. Even as I speak to you today, you got incoming on approach. Are Your signal's breaking up. Outline territories to end this scourge once and for all. They're right on top of you. Losing you, Avenger. Raise them again! We will ensure your continued safety and well-being throughout this crisis. Get your people out of there! With your cooperation, we will overcome these radical elements and usher in another 20 years of peace and prosperity. They don't stand a chance. Commander, we should get a squad ready to deploy. I think we find our next mission. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll end this part. And I hope you'll join me next time when we deal with the retaliation in West Asia, Operation Iron King. Uh, my name has been Red Star Rocket. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time.